Oh. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of our uh, season of Masonic Light Talk. I'm your host, Past Master Rod Funderburk of Bivouac Lodge Number 503. We are hailing from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and we're part of the 30th District, where our Worshipful Master is Gawan A. Muhammad, and our District Deputy Grand Master is Terry Andrews, and of course, our fearless leader of the North Carolina jurisdiction is our most worshipful Grand Master Daniel D.T. Thompson. And those of you listening, you know already know the true purpose of Masonic Light Talk is to give the craft as well as our listening audience a chance to see the men behind some of the various titles within masonry and also to allow you to see that we're all just regular people just living regular lives having regular experiences whether they be good bad and sometimes ugly and also we want to make it clear that when people talking about what masons are all about and what they do Something that I always like to say is we're here to make good men better. We're not here to make a bad person good. But we're here to make good men better. And that is the foundation of what masonry is all about. And for those of you who are just beginning to follow us a little bit, we have been including all houses within the North Carolina jurisdiction. So if there's any house or someone or a title that you'd like for us to interview and have on this show, then please let us know and we'll do our best to make that happen. And of course, uh, with that being said, we have a special guest on this morning's edition of Masonic Light Talk. And it is our esteemed brother, the Reverend Reginald W. McClinton, who is a grand worthy patron of the Grand Chapter Order of the Eastern Star, PHA Right of Adoption for the State of North Carolina Jurisdiction, which is an affiliate of the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge, North Carolina Jurisdiction Incorporated. Reverend McClinton, I'm, I'm probably going to go back and forth and call you Reverend and Grand and all that good stuff because I have the utmost respect and honor for the title of Reverend. I uh, grew up a pastor's son. My dad was a pastor. And I know what that life is all about. It is a life of service. So welcome Grand Patron McClinton today. Thank you for being on the show. Happy New Year to you, and how are you doing, sir? Happy New Year to you, and, and thank you for having me on the show. Good morning. Uh, I'm, you can just call me Reggie. I'll be fine. Don't have to use you know titles and stuff. Titles are not what make us. We make the titles. So you can just call me Reggie. I'm glad yes, to sir. be on the show with you this morning. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out. And we don't have a lot of, just a lot, a lot of time. So we're just going to jump right into it. And we're going to uh, uh, just keep on moving. And first of all, I just want to ask you with this pandemic and everything going on, you know, how are you doing and how's your family doing and, and the precautions that you're continuing to take to stay safe during this time? Well, the family's doing fine. I have uh, three kids at home that are on the computer every day uh, doing their classes. And then my wife is a teacher. She's also at home on the computer doing her classes, but we're staying play, staying safe and keeping our masks on and trying to stay out of these large crowds and stuff. Good deal, good deal. That is awesome. Glad to hear everyone is doing well. So as we get started, uh, Brother McClinton, I just wanna ask you, a uh, grand patron, what lodge are you hailing from? I hail from St. Allen number 350 in the big city of Ghana, North Carolina, where okay. I work from, now I work for Master Brother Roderick Flemings. Good deal, good deal. Grant, also I wanted to ask you, just tell us those who don't know about you, you being the grand uh, worthy patron, who don't know about you, the man, uh, Brother Reginald W. McClinton. Would you just give us a little background information on you? Well, I was born in 1965 in Sampson County, down in Clinton, North Carolina, and was raised up there in the Clinton area. I moved to Raleigh uh, in about 85, 86, and I've, I've been here ever since. I, I have uh, four daughters and two sons, and my wife, and as you see, I pastor church. I've been pastoring the same church, uh, Rand Street Christian Church, for 18 years come this April, and uh, it's just been a great journey God has brought us through and 
cared us to, and us only know us through God that we have and his grace that we have done the things that we have been able to do. Yes, sir. And thank you for your work and service, especially in the Christian ministry. It takes a special person uh, to try and win souls for the Lord. And that is very, very important. It's life. That is something that uh, we will have our rewards in heaven or you will have your reward in heaven uh, yes, at sir. the end when it's all said and done. So as we get into it, what is, for those who don't know, you being the grand patron, what exactly is the purpose or function and primary duties of the grand patron? Grand patron, my job is the position is in the liaison, liaison between the grand lodge and the grand chapter. Uh, I'm to advise the grand word, the matron on uh, things uh, in the chapter and help her make sure that her administration is a uh, success. I'm also there as a representative of the Worst Worst for Grand Master in the grand chapter that uh, all things come uh, through me and go to him and from him and goes to the grand chapter. Okay, good deal. Grand, I'm going to back up one thing. Um, and I'm going to ask you this. I should have asked you this earlier. But what is it that started your journey in masonry? What brought you to masonry? What is it that happened in your path that brought you to masonry? And how has that journey been leading you to the being becoming the grand patron? Well, my grandfather and my aunts and uncles all were in masonry. My uncle, uh, granddad, was all mason. My aunts was Eastern stars. My dad was a mason. Uh, you're the first person I'm telling this. I used to go in, in, in his room when he was away and pulled out that little bag he had hid in the drawer and put his little apron on and run around the house and say, one day I'm going to be a Mason. And uh, just seeing the, the fellowship and brotherhood that my dad and the grandfather them had in the community and stuff made me really want to be a Mason. Uh, I started out uh, KOP in uh, Truth Seekers 222 in Garland, North Carolina. Uh, Brother Franklin Brown, I think, was the uh, master at the time in that lodge when we started the KOP. So I was in KOP for a while and then uh, got to smelling perfume and gas and got away from it. But then, you know, it, I come back to my roots and I finally joined the Masonic Lodge and I've been there ever since. Um, and actually when I came to this church, as pastor, the Eastern Star was meeting here at this church. And I would come down on Saturdays to do my studies and I had to let them in for their meetings. And the matron said, well, since you come in every Saturday, open up, every first Saturday to open up for us, why don't you join the Eastern Star? So that's where it started from. I joined the Eastern Star then and I've been, been here ever since. I've held uh, a lot of titles through the uh, grand chapter as uh, patron at large, um, trustee and moved on up through the rank to associate uh, patron and up to grand patron now. Okay. Graham, just based upon what you said without revealing any secrets or anything like that, what does the worthy patron have to do some of the responsibilities on the lodge level or the chapter level, excuse me? What are some of the duties of that uh, patron there? Well, the patron, uh, giving wise counsel to the matron, also conferring degrees. When uh, degrees are conferred, the worthy patron is the one that uh, conferred the degrees and stuff in the, uh, in the chapter room. Okay, good deal. Now, what would you say to any brothers who might be considering, uh, you know, join the OES, which is the Order of the, Order of the Eastern Star, as well as to those who think, um, you know, maybe I'm not sure about the Eastern Star. I'm not sure where they fit into Masonry. What would you say to brothers who may be having those thoughts? Well, I would, I would say that just like our wives support us when we leave home to go to our Masonic meetings, our brothers, we can support, you know, our wives when they leave to go to their Eastern Star meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, and it would be great for you to both have an organization that built on the same things that you both can have that private conversation at home together about the Eastern Star and about the 
Masonic. And, you know, it's a, a, a wonderful organization to be in, uh, brotherly and sisterly love, showing mm -hmm. yet one for another. You know, it's not about us, but it's about everyone else. And, and that's what we teach, that it's not about us. It's really about helping someone else or helping our um, neighbors being the best that we can be. Yes, sir. Um, I haven't had the order uh, or the honor of being a patron, uh, but I was a member of Bivouac uh, chapter. And I tell you, the sisters work hard. They do all that they need to do. If there's something I know that our lodge, Bivouac Lodge, uh, whenever we do some charity events and things of that nature, we need that final touch that really only the ladies know how to put together. Not only are they able to come in and put that final touch on things, but grand, they're able to point out things and show us what can be done better and what can be done more yes, efficiently. Yes, I mean, brother, it is awesome having yes, the sisters around. You know what I mean? Because they, yeah. they really complete us. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that is awesome. I'm glad you said that. Glad you they said pay that. Attention. They pay attention to presentation. We don't think about presentation, <laughs> but they, they pay attention to presentation. You know, they want to make sure it's right. Yes, sir. They do. They do. Grand, I have another question. How does one become a grand worthy patron. Now, is that an appointed or an elected position? Well, first of all, you have to become, you have to be a past master of the lodge. And you have to be a past patron of the chapter. And then it's twofold. It's an elected position, but it's actually an appointment by the grand master. The grand mm -hmm. chapter votes on the person and it's a recommendation to the grand master to accept this person as their worthy patron. Okay, gotcha. So that is a process. There's a lot of work and a, and a lot of work and a lot of work that yes, goes sir. on with that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. A grand, recently we've had some communications come down the pipeline speaking of a joint grand ses session to possibly be held this year in Winston-Salem, hopefully if COVID-19 and other circumstances allow that to happen. What do you think of that idea and for those who may not have gotten the details um, about, you know, whom they should contact since we don't publicize things too much here on the air these days. But what do you think of that idea? I think it's a wonderful idea. It's, it, it helps uh, brothers and sisters to come together again, husband and wife to come together. And it also gives them an opportunity to save money on hotel and travel. And you don't have to take two weeks to offer work to go. You can do it all at one time. And, uh, uh, I don't want to let the cat out in the bag, but we have, are in the process of uh, starting this inaugural uh, session, which will be in September in Winston-Salem. Uh -huh. And uh, hotel information, I understand that the embassy suite is already full, but the uh, Marriott in Winston-Salem has, still has room. So everybody's catching on and look like they're uh, going to enjoy and uh, want to be at this uh, inaugural joint session for North Carolina. That's right. And just for those who are thinking about it and saying, hey, I may not be able to uh, stay at the embassy suites, the Marriott, they are right beside each other. It, it is right. literally walking across the street, uh, not even a block. You just walk across the street. Those hotels are right beside each other. So you will not miss a beat just because you may not be staying at the host hotel. That's just for those who may be considering it. But the Marriott is the host hotel. Sorry, I didn't say it, but Marriott is the host hotel. Marriott is the, okay. Well, yes. if you're staying over at the uh, Embassy Suites, it's just a walk the other way across yeah. the street. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah, right try to get that, They try to get that Embassy Suite breakfast over there, but, you know, the Marriott <laughs> has a breakfast just as good. Yes, sir. That's right. That is right. Grant, I also have a couple of questions that, uh, you know, have been floating around out there. And um, one of them is, what are the sisters or a few sisters have asked, are you familiar with what could have happened to the Order of the Eastern Star license plate? Um, there are several sisters who have found that it's been very difficult to get those license plates. And just in case there's some folks out there who are interested, um, what's the best way to obtain a license plate? Uh, the same as we obtain our brother's uh, plates is you have to go to DMV, apply for them at the DMV. As uh, far as I know, unless something has changed recently, uh, they still have them at the DMV. I know that there's been a, you know, a shift of the DMV moving from Raleigh to offices and, and the COVID has 
cause a lot of officers to close, but as far as I know, they can still get them through the uh, DMV. Just okay, so they still the, can go through DMV. Yeah. Just ask for the OES license plates. Okay, good deal, good deal. Um, another question concerning our sisters, it's been expressed um, that the grant, some of the sisters feel that the grand worthy uh, matron should possibly have the opportunity uh, to come on the show. And we would love to have the grand matron to come on the show at some time. Do you feel that the grand matron would be interested in coming to visit and spending some time with us and just talking a little bit? And if so, uh, how could we get you to help us make that process happen? Well, Brother, Brother Rodney, <laughs> she would be glad to come on the broadcast. Uh, I've already uh, spoke to her. I actually spoke to her on last e on Friday evening. I talked to her about it, and she said, "Sure, she would wouldn't mind coming on. Just uh, send her the information of when you want to uh, get her on, and she's ready to go." So okay. I've already done my leg work. It's up to you now. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done what you're supposed I to do. I know what I'm supposed to do. It's up to you now, my brother. You know we appreciate that to the <laughs> utmost. We really do. Oh, you know, Graham, with all the COVID-19 and everything going on out here, um, we still try and do what we can in the community, you know, has Masons, has Eastern Star. But sometimes in the community, you run into a little opposition. And what I mean by that is this. There are people who say, oh, Masonry goes against Christianity. Masonry goes against what God really puts us on earth to do. And there are a lot of people who truly don't understand masonry so as a man of the gospel a reverend a man of the cloth what would you say to those who have heard or believe masonry and the order of the eastern star goes against christianity and its values well i say if, if you don't know you don't know you know some people speculate that they know but Everything that we practice and everything that we uh, read is, you can find it in the scripture, you can find it in the Bible. Uh, uh, and a lot of people just, uh, they just think it's a cult, but it's really not. It's uh, talking about brotherly love, as you said earlier, uh, making good men better. Um, we allow us to, to take care of our sisters, our wives, our orphans and stuff. You know, it, it's all biblically based in the church. And, you know, a lot of things people see one thing and think another. As, as I was talking earlier, you know, we as, as pastors and ministers at one time was talking down social media, that social media was the devil. But if you look at it now, that's the only way now that we can get the gospel out is it because of social media. So you have to realize God uses all kinds of things and all kinds of people in order to get his word out and, and the way that he wants it to be. So, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a biblically based organization. Then it, it makes us know who our families are and it, it gives us family values and it, it makes us love our neighbor. Like the Bible says, love our neighbor as I says. Yes, sir. That it does. And believe it or not, uh, you know, a lot of brothers who I've dealt with and been talking to who are inside of masonry, you know, they have formed, they informed me since they have gotten into masonry, they find themselves reading their Bibles more. Because mm -hmm. as you know, one of the things that we believe on is that Bible should be a rule and guide in our daily walks of life. Mm -hmm. And so you said it all, you know, it, it's a foundation. Um, uh, everything that happens in masonry has come directly uh, from Bible principles. And that is so, so very important. And thank you so much for those words. Um, Grant, is there anything else that you would like to share with us maybe that I've missed concerning uh, not only the Order of the Eastern Star, but anything on your heart concerning masonry in general that you would like to share with us and our listeners? Um, I just like to, to, to make a plea to our brothers that are already Eastern stars that have not been uh, participating with the stars or not been coming to the meetings, uh, rethink it and come 
back to your meetings because the sisters really need you in the chapters with them, not only just for uh, your strong muscles to help set up tables and to protect them, but they need your, your moral support and your prayers. And, you know, we got a lot of uh, men that are patrons, that are, that are uh, master masons, that they feel that they, there's no place for them in the Eastern Star, but they are, uh, are very needed in the Eastern Star to help us carry out uh, the mandate that God has given us to carry out. So I just asked our brothers that are, that are stars or those that are not stars that would like to be stars, get an application and join us on the star side. Yes, sir. And believe it or not, by becoming a star, uh, that will help you see how important that family unit is so important and, and it's a foundation to us as a society, especially when it comes to Prince Hall family. Right. Right. That it shows a serious foundation under the Prince Hall. And if we've ever gotten away from it, then hopefully uh, becoming a star and uh, reuniting with the sisters will allow us to get back on track of seeing the importance in that family unit. And even that, you know, you got the, the gleaners for, the, uh, for our girls and the KOP for our boys, you know, that there's a whole family connection for the boys, yes, the girls, husband, and the wife. That's you know, right. You got That's right. that unit working together. It's a wonderful thing in the family and in the house. Yes, it is. And it's all right under the Prince Hall affiliate family there. Every last bit of it from the mother, the father, and the children, both boys and girls. Yes, you said it. Yes, Thank sir. you, Grant. I appreciate it. Well, yeah. Grant, if there's nothing else on your heart that you want to share, we have come to the end of this edition. And we're going to get ready and close unless there's anything else that you'd like to share with us. Well, I'd, I'd like to, first of all, thank you all for uh, not counting it robbery, to take a chance to, uh, to interview me and to interview so many others. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to get this information out to people, to let uh, other people know that it's just ordinary people that are at these top positions. And the only reason we made it there is because of them. Uh, there's no big eyes and little U's. We all are same people. We all hurt. When they hurt, we all rejoice when they rejoice. Uh, and I just thank you all for taking time, uh, District 30, for taking time out to do this uh, podcast and broadcast. And then I'd also like to thank uh, uh, our Grandmaster, who has done a wonderful job uh, since his taking over the reins of this North Carolina jurisdiction. And we have moved to higher heights and uh, deeper depths. And I know we're going to go higher uh, in masonry because it's always been said that we've been doing stuff wrong so long that it's kind of hard to get away from that. But uh, we're now moving into some new ways and some new things. And we'll, we thank him for his vision and that he has allowed us to do what we do. Yes, sir. That is so very true. And thank you so much for those words, grand worthy patron. Reginald McClinton, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on and grace us with your presence and the information that you've allowed to come into our lives and to come into our homes so that we can become a little more broadened about the order of the Eastern Star. Thank you so much. So Prince Hall family, thank you for tuning in and listening to this edition of Masonic Light Talk, uh, which has featured today our grand worthy patron of the Grand Chapter Order of the Eastern Star, the Reginald, Reverend Reginald McClinton. And for those of you who are not a part of our Masonic family. Remember, it's not hard to become part of the family. In order to be one, just ask one. I'm your host, Past Master Rod Funderburk of Bill White Lodge number 503. I can't wait to see you again on our next edition of Masonic Light Talk. Until then, my brothers and sisters, please travel light.